today we will be discussing about the measures of central tendency usually measures of central tendency are also called as measures of central location now let's have a look at why these uh, measures are called as central tendency and measures of central location so these measures are used to represent a single uh, a data or a set of data using a single value now this value should describe the overall characteristics of a group of observations and it also tells us the center of the distribution of the data where it is located and hence the name measures of central tendency or the uh, measures of central location now there are some commonly used measures which we will be discussing today and that is arithmetic mean median and mode there are uh, some other measures too that we will discuss it later now let's consider an example how hot is the month of june in delhi so these kind of questions you might have encountered in your real life now the answer will be somewhat like this by a single figure or uh, of the average temperature of that month for example the average temperature of for the month of june was uh, around 35 degree so that a single value was used to represent the whole month's average uh, the whole month's observation or the whole month's temperature now these measures are also used for the purpose of comparison for example suppose that we have two groups of students that are boys and girls at the age of 10 and we want to check uh, we want to do a study regarding the height of these both um, groups that is the boys and the girls by taking the average height of both the groups we can compare how much if there is any difference or why the difference is all these studies can be done later on but with the help of a simple average you can uh, you can understand why there is a change in the height of boys and girls now we'll move on to a measure uh the first measure of central tendency that we are going to study is about arithmetic mean it is also known as the mean or it can be also called as an average now arithmetic mean is the sum of all observations divided by the total number of observation now it's usually denoted by x bar and the formula is x bar is equal to summation x divided by small n where x is the observations and n is the total number of observations a more accurately uh, also a more accurate formula is given below that is x bar is equal to summation i is equal to n xi divided by the number now to understand this formula i will give you an example now let us assume that x stands for the age of students now let the age of five students be 19 20 22 22 and 17 then the variable x can be represented as x takes the values 19 20 22 22, 22 and 17 now the mean here is calculated by adding all the observations dividing by dividing it by the total number of observations that is n and when you add up all the observations and divided by the total number of observation we get the mean as 20 okay so you keep this uh, example in your mind because right now after a few slides we will be discussing about median and we will find out how by using median you will do the same example and how different your uh, what your mean will be over there okay so that is all about arithmetic mean and we have only considered this uh, formula right now so we are going to consider another formula that is something with regard to the frequencies so when i get a data that is regarding uh, all the observations of x and the corresponding frequency sometimes you might get a data like this or you might get the table like this in your question so what will you do to find out the average uh, by using arithmetic mean so here you have to clearly use frequencies so your formula will be x bar is equal to again it is denoted by x bar but the formula will be summation of 
f into x f into x means the frequency with a corresponding multiplied by the corresponding observations or the observations multiplied by uh, mul multiplied with the corresponding frequencies and that you can write it in the third column f into x so that is how you get f into x so in this case it is 17 multiplied by 2 you will get 34 and after that you have to take the sum of this third column now the sum of this third column is mathematically represented as summation of f multiplied by x sorry if you read this this is not f of x it's actually f star x that i will correct it uh, after a while a whole divided by summation of f summation of f is nothing but the sum of all the frequencies which adds uh, in this case in this example it adds up to 10 and this column it adds up to 200 now if you take if you substitute these values in this formula you will get 200 divided by 10 and that is again 20 okay so that is how you do um, the uh, you find the arithmetic mean of a grouped data so here summation of f is the summation uh, summation f is the summation of all frequencies and uh, n is the uh, uh, number of observations summation of uh, f into x this is uh, not f of x f into x is the summation of each value of x multiplied by its corresponding frequency f now let's move on to the properties of arithmetic mean so i'm discussing about two major properties over here so property one the sum of deviations about the mean will always add up to zero and if we subtract all the individual values from their mean then some differences will be positive and some will be negative now when all the differences are added up we get zero that is we have to consider this particular formula over here and uh, let's have an let's have a look at the example okay now here i have given the for example if you consider that i have given the marks uh, a student has got in five subjects it's written as 10 20 30 40 and 50 and if i find the mean or the average of the marks that he has got he or she has got it is 30 okay so if I subtract each observation from the corresponding mean that is 30 I would get 10 minus 30 10 minus 30 is minus 20 then again 20 minus 30 is minus 10 30 minus 30 is 0 and it goes up to uh, it goes on till it finishes so the second column if you take a look as we said there are some negative values and as well as some positive values if you add these up you will get zero so it is clear that whatever i have written over here that is the sum of deviations about the mean will always add up to zero that is it's nothing but the difference between each observations from the mean and if i add this up so instead of adding it up in mathematical terms i write it as summation you will get it as zero so that is the first property of arithmetic mean now let's move on to the second property the sum of the square deviations of the items from arithmetic mean is minimum so here uh, we will move on to an example here the sum of squares of the deviation is equal to 10 so in the first property we have uh, only uh, viewed this th first two columns right so in the second uh, property i'm going to introduce you to another column that is column number three which is the difference between each observation and the mean and i'm going to square that okay so here uh, the x values are 2 3 4 5 and 6 and the mean over here is 4 if i take the difference between uh, the mean the mean is 4 over here and if i take the difference between each observation and the mean so for example in the first row i get it as minus 2 that is 2 minus 4 it is minus 2 then 3 minus 4 it is minus 1 0 1 and 2 and in the next column i'm going to square it up so i get 4 1 0 1 and 4 and if i add all these i get what 10 so it is said that in the property 2 
these deviations are taken from any other value uh, the sum of square deviations will be greater than 10. So if it is from the mean, if the deviations are taken from the mean and if you square it and if you sum it, the value that you get, so in this case it is 10, that is the minimum value. But if you take any other uh, observation instead of mean, then you won't get uh, anything less than 10. So uh, for to, to check that I have taken 3. So let us calculate the sum of squares of deviation of an item from a value which is less than the arithmetic mean. So I'm going to consider here as uh, here 3 and we will just look at the uh, look at what we get. So here I have again written the x values. I have taken the difference between each observation and 3 and then I have squared it up and then I am going to add all these and I just got it as 15 which is greater than 10 okay so it is clear that the sum of squares of deviation is greater in this case now there are some limitations for uh, arithmetic mean uh, so I'm going to discuss only one limitation over here so the value of the mean depends upon each and every item of the series therefore the extreme values um, be it very small or very large it affects the average so let's have a look at the example now if you consider the mark of four students that is uh, the marks of four students are given as 60 70 10 and 80 and if I take the average uh, so here the average mark is given by the sum of all the observations divided by 4 I get it as 55 so here it is clear that 55 I can't represent 55 uh, 55 is not a number which is should be represented in terms um, when you consider these marks because here it is clear that uh, all the other marks are about average that we got right except this 10 so this 10 has considerably reduced or shifted the position of the average okay and there is also another factor uh, I would like to add is that the number of observations over here that is 4 so also the num uh, number of observations also uh, makes a greater impact uh, for if there is an extreme value it just considerably shifts the position of the average okay so that is very much evident in this case now we will move on to another measure that is called as mode now mode is another form of average now people have a misconception that uh, only arithmetic mean is called as an average no mode is a form of an average median is a form of an average geometric mean is a form of an average okay so mode is another form of an average now the what is mode mode is the most frequently occurring value in a set of data and mode is not at all affected by the extreme values unlike the arithmetic mean and it can be also used to represent data under different situations the own it is also the only measure of central tendency that can be used for analyzing qualitative data now let's take an example let us take the ages of 10 students and the ages are given over here so here you can see it's clear that the value 22 or the age 22 has occurred three times and it is the most frequently occurring uh, value and hence the mode in this case is 22 and the average in this case is 22 now let's move on to another uh, measure of central tendency that is called as median so median is again a form of an average and it is also a measure of central tendency now this appears in the center of an ordered data now whenever you get um, an example or whenever you get a problem and if you are asked to find out the mean you first thing you have to do is you have to arrange the data in an ascending order so here I have clearly arranged the data in an ascending order now here it is given that the income of five employees so I have arranged it in the ascending order and I have found out the middle most um, value so the middlemost value is 7020 so that is the average income of that uh, company uh, in case of the uh, when you take f the f uh, that particular five employees into uh, consideration so but this cannot be always right because if you want someone uh, like uh, if you have six employees then what will you do so if you have six, six employees uh, we will move on to the example two again you have to arrange this in an ascending order and then 
uh, take the middlemost values that is the middlemost value over here is 7020 and 7200 you will have to find the average of the middlemost value so here I get it as 7110 so that is what you have to uh, do when you get an even number so when you get an even number the median is found out this way when it is an odd number the median should be found out uh, like you just have to choose the middlemost value that's all and there are some other formulas also related to this median and mode when it comes in terms of frequencies or grouped data or when class intervals are introduced so all those things we will discuss when we discuss the problems I will come up with some other formulas too but this is the basic ideology behind mode and median now there should be certain uh, Re requests that the measures of central tendency or the measures should meet uh, there should be some there are some uh, what properties or some qualities that uh, these measures should meet so here we are going to discuss about that and the first quality is that it should be easy to understand and calculate second quality is that it should be rigidly defined in the sense it should have only one and only one interpretation that is if you are someone or you are the investigator or investigator and if you have done some uh, analysis on a particular problem or a data set and if you have used any measures over there and another person comes up and if he uses uh, a measure and if he calculates the value if both the values are not same then it will be a problem so you sh whatever you should do it should be rigidly defined there should not be any personal bias or prejudice uh, so because it affects the whole analysis okay so that is uh, one point then the next is that it should be based upon all items that is all the observations should be taken into consideration over here so uh, if in this example for instance in this example the average is 30 when you take into consideration these five values but accidentally if you omit this 50 over here then the average will be different so it should be based upon uh, all the items then the next is that it should have a sampling stability that it should not be affected by sampling fluctuation it means that if we pick 10 different group of college students at random and if we compute the average height or any other attributes of each group then we should expect to get the same value from these groups so whatever measures that we take should not be affected by these sampling uh, fluctuations now the last one is that it should not be affected much by the extreme values for example um, we have uh, already discussed this point um, about when we discussed the limitations of arithmetic mean that it should not be affected by a very small or a very large data or observation in a, in a particular data the problem is that if it has an influence then the average uh, will be shifted uh, to uh, the either sides to one or the other so it would not be uh, that that particular value could not represent the data and uh, hence it is uh, should be noted that arithmetic mean is not always a very good average or a measure of central tendency to use in certain instances so you should be uh, very sure that what you should uh, which uh, measure you should um, take up when you do an analysis on a particular data so with that this was a basic uh, idea idea behind uh, measure of central tendency so we will be discussing more on this when uh, in the next class and we'll do some problems too thank you